In this and the next few videos, we'll consider several special situations in which the eigenvalues and sometimes the eigenvectors are easy to determine without even resorting to the eigenvalue algorithm. And these won't be just nifty observations. These will be very insightful examples that will help you improve your understanding of eigenvalues and that will find numerous practical applications. So we'll start with the diagonal matrix and there will be more to say about diagonal matrices than you would think. So I think that the eigenvalues of a diagonal matrix are clear to just about everyone. They appear on the diagonal and you can use the same logic as we did in the case of triangular matrices. So our three eigenvalues are 3, 7, and 8. And while I'm writing them out, you may want to think about the corresponding eigenvectors, which are almost easy, just as easy to determine. All right, 3, 7, and negative 8. Okay, and the, and the corresponding eigenvectors are, of course, for lambda equals 3, are 1, 0, 0. Well, let me write it down and then we'll see why that is. V1 equals 1, 0, 0. And I think it's easy to see why this is the eigenvector, because when you multiply this matrix by 1, 0, 0, the result will be the first column of the matrix and it will be 3, 0, 0, which of course is 3 times the input. So indeed, this is the eigenvalue and this is the corresponding eigenvector. And the eigenvector associated with lambda 2 is 0, 1, 0. And the explanation would be just about exactly the same. And finally, V3 would be, you guessed it, 0, 0, 1. So for diagonal matrices, eigenvalues are right there on the diagonal, and eigenvectors are our dream decomposition vectors. You may call this the standard basis for R3 or Rn in general, right? You can also call them R pivot columns if you so choose, all right? But there you go. These are the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of a diagonal matrix. Now let me ask you an interesting question. Would you say that this diagonal matrix, same numbers in different order, 7, minus 8, 3, have the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Think about it for a moment, and I'll bet you 9 out of 10 said yes. And I'm not going to claim that yes is the wrong answer, I just think that no is a better answer. And here is why. When we say that two matrices have the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors, or if we use the word spectrum, which means the collection of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. When we say that two matrices have the same spectrum, what we mean is not only the fact that the eigenvalues are the same and that the collection of the eigenvectors are the same, but that they are matched up in the same way also. We want for two matrices to have the same spectrum. We want their eigenvalue eigenvector pairs to be the same. And this matrix, of course, has the same eigenvalues and it has the same collection of eigenvectors. But of course, this eigenvector would correspond to the eigenvalue 7, this one would correspond to the eigenvalue negative 8, and this one would correspond to the eigenvalue 3. So same eigenvalues and eigenvectors, maybe, but the correspondences are not the same. So I would actually say that this matrix and this matrix have different spectra. They have different eigenvalues and eigenvectors because the pairings are different. Had this not been the case, or had this not been the tradition, then we would have already answered one of the questions that has arisen in the past, and that is, could there be two matrices, two different matrices, that have identical spectra, or as we put it then, that have identical eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Had we accepted this situation as being the same eigenvalues and eigenvectors, the answer to that question would have been Yes, it is possible to have two different matrices with two different matrices with identical spectra. But because we're rejecting these two matrices as having identical spectra, that question remains open. And we still don't know whether it's possible to have two different matrices with identical combinations of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Actually, we're getting very close to answering that question 
and the answer is just around the corner and will present itself when we're discussing the eigenvalue decomposition, our next big topic. But what diagonal matrices will help us do right now, another outstanding question from the past, is to be able to construct a matrix with given eigenvalues and eigenvectors. 